Hey, Scott Wilkinson here, editor of avsforum.com and host of the Home Theater Geeks podcast. I'm talking with Dr. Nandu Nandakumar, senior vice president at LG. Now, LG is unique among the TV manufacturers in that you have pursued with vigor uh, OLED technology, uh, which has great promise and looks really fantastic. There are those, though, who are concerned that it doesn't get as bright as LED and therefore might not be as appropriate for high dynamic range. But I heard you this, this morning make the counter argument. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, with respect to the, um, the next generation of viewing experience, which includes uh, dynamic range as one aspect, color, um, improved gray, grayscale resolution, which reduces banding, and a variety of other psychovisual parameters, uh, we feel that the OLED technology really advances the state of the art of uh, the display technology and provides a really enhanced viewing experience. Now, g given all of these other parameters that lead to better image quality, uh, high brightness is just one aspect of it. And in terms of high dynamic range, it's really about the range, and it's really about the number of f-stops that you have to cover. And um, high brightness is one aspect of it. OLED TVs do really well even in that space, uh, and we have made huge improvements over the last few years. We'll continue to make uh, further improvements, but even today's technology is uh, very much uh, suitable for viewing of high dynamic range. And it's the- Primarily because the blacks are so deep, right? That's right, that's right. And I was about to say that, that the blacks are deep, so you get a lot of detail in the shadow, uh, right next to very bright areas, which is really what HDR is all about, where the LCD TVs don't do very well, for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not to mention the viewing angle is quite a bit better on OLED than it is on LCD. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the promise, the value proposition of this premium viewing experience is available not just to people who sit in that very limited sweet spot, but anywhere in the room, really, that view uh, the OLED TVs. Now, that brings up the question of the curve. And you, uh, LG and Samsung, are both um, quite uh, involved in making these curved TVs, which to me, uh, pardon me, offset a bit the advantage that OLED has by sitting off axis, because if you're sitting off axis, you can still have a very good image quality, but the geometry is a little distorted because of the curve. Uh, have you heard that from other people? Or are you th thinking about um, flat versus curved, or are you really committed to, to making these curved TVs? No, no, actually, um, you know, the curved uh, f form factor was uh, very popular in certain markets around the world, mm -hmm. uh, but I think the novelty has uh, worn out, um, and um, definitely the company is committed to uh, flat form factors, as well as curved for those who prefer it. Okay. Now, the other um, commonly cited um, limitation of OLED is the lifetime of the uh, sub-pixels, particularly the blue. Now, LG uses a white sub-pixel in addition to red, green, and blue. Uh, does that solve that problem? Uh, well, actually, uh, what we do is we have um, OLED pixels that are uh, identical in all of our sub-pixels, and we use a red, green, and blue filter um, for those non-white uh, sub-pixels. So we kind of uh, have addressed this problem of uh, perhaps um, you know, non-uniform aging of different colored pixels by, by using a filter plus a white pixel approach. And of course, if you use a filter, you can hit any target primaries you want, depending on what filter you put in there. That's right. I mean, right now, uh, they're tuned to the Rec. 709 primaries. They go outside of that space, uh, close to DCI-P3, and eventually will continue to expand based on how we tweak the, um, the filters. Can, the, can a filter-based display get all the way out to 2020, which is m almost monochromatic, mono-wavelength primaries? Yes, I think, I think pretty much the industry has realized that um, you know, full exact 2020 coverage is unrealistic. Even for laser projection systems, which are monochromatic, there's always a little bit of a spread to the spectrum, uh, but it has the ability to get wide enough that you have, um, you know, all the colors that you can experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but th but that, that's on our roadmap. That's not where we are today. Understood. Understood. Uh, so what is the next most uh, immediate uh, product or technology that we might see from LG. Of course, I, you can't reveal anything that's uh, super secret, but you know, give us a clue. 
Well, I think just on the OLED side, the continuous um, investment in that technology development, you'll continue to see um, growth in those technologies. And I think that um, that will also spread to other uh, brands will probably also uh, adopt OLEDs, and that's what we hope. I mean, Sony has already uh, launched its professional grade uh, OLED monitors, uh, and we ex hope that the industry will see the benefit of OLED and, and it'll f you'll find broader adoption. Fantastic. Thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you.